Okay, there's a tool, uh, this is a General Motors uh, special tool, but you can do a similar thing with just about anybody's uh, solenoid where the, the solenoids themselves are removable. Uh, now there are some solenoid packs where the entire, every single solenoid is in one package and you've got to change the entire thing. You're going to have a hard time testing that one. But this has, as you can see, uh, a bunch of air nipples uh, connected to it. And then on the back side, it has passages. where we can connect a solenoid to it. Okay, so I've, I've got one solenoid uh, connected there. This solenoid has an electrical connection that's just two wires. Go through the other side. And then alligator clips to connect it to a, a battery or power supply, which I forgot to get out, so let me get my jumper box out of here. When you guys use a jumper box on a stainless steel top bench or table, <laughs> You need to have some insulation uh, somewhere. Maybe grab some fender covers or uh, something so that we don't short something out. But um, I'm going to connect. <laughs> Can we go get a fender cover? No, I'm good. This is okay. So let me. <coughs> Tip this to where you can see it. I'm just connecting power to the uh, jumper box and listen to the click. That's the on-off clicking that, I've, that I'm talking about. Now this is a normally open solenoid, so it should blow uh, air through it always. This is going to be pretty noisy. There it is in the off position, fluid flowing through it. That's a bad solenoid, it's leaking still. So should it, should it eliminate all, yes. all air pressure? So let me stick one in, let me stick another one in. I've got four different solenoids here. Okay, I'll plug the air in again. So it's off, now I get power to it. That's what it should do. And when it shuts off, that's when that valve in the valve body would have pressure build up and move it, move it forward. <laughs> Here's another one. Let's see if this one clicks. Okay, it clicks. So it's good. Well, these are different size holes for different solenoids. Oh, that's. You want to make sure that they click before you 
hit the error to them. All right, this one clicks. So that one's good. And one last one. <laughs> See if it clicks. No clicking. So We've, we've got one that clicked but didn't seal. We have two that clicked and sealed the, the air pressure. Um, and then one that doesn't click at all. And if we had the air hook to it, it would just always, always be going through it. Now these are all normally open solenoids. There are some that are normally closed. Um, I've got an Allison transmission valve body right here. Um, so here are those two pulse width modulated solenoids I told you about. They call those solenoid A and B that actually do the, the shifting. And then we have three separate shift valves to position the shift valves so it's ready to shift. We have a torque converter clutch solenoid. And then we have another solenoid to turn line pressure down into idle so we get uh, a quieter operation. All of these solenoids, the that look the same, well that one's different. All of these are uh, on-off solenoids. It's these great big ones are the pulse width modulated ones, and so they're gonna have different resistances. Well, let me just grab a multimeter real quick. Because you're gonna have to do the same thing. We're just gonna go to ohms. And then you're just going to do a resistance test of each solenoid. So there's 10.9 ohms. Twenty-two ohms. And these great big ones, remember I said they're pretty low resistance. 5.7 ohms. So why was the resistance values different between the first five This one? Yeah. Notice it's a different looking solenoid. This is, this is actually pulse width modulated also for the uh, torque converter clutch solenoid. Instead of just torque converter clutch solenoid on or off, it's, it's a miniature pulse width modulated. Yeah. So it eases into it a little bit? Yeah. 